Somos. Somos primeras. Ay.
to be open from a uh, change of hours from 12 noon to 10 a.m. and it's amended for the chapter 66, 136, section 6, 57, 52. It is on Sundays, so the only thing they're asking for is two hours earlier, so I have to take a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving right along. Chuck, this is going to be what you're going to excel at. These are the uh, reimbursements for. Uh, yep. I guess number one is actually number two, but we'll take number two first. Um, that's the project for crack sealing. And uh, I get a little confused here, Tracy. With the full amount of 53000 and there's two installments of the 24, or is it 24 the last? Uh, we can do that critical. The 52 was the total amount of the additional grant, and this is for the reimbursement, the first reimbursement. The first reimbursement. Yeah, it's a partial. Mm -hmm. And it shows us the original figure and then the uh, after that subtract. So we can check. Uh, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. And I believe this is actually number one if you look at the figures, but probably about the same thing. This is by field, uh, village drainage design and construction. Uh, and it's reimbursement for the uh, 904.96. Is that yes. right, Tracy? Yep. And uh, the amount to this date that's been expended on this project is $16,784.40. Yep. So, that being said, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, um, it's more so smooth here, but pay attention, uh, move my train thought. Um, we're going to go to crack ceiling again. Um, and there was an overrun here, but it's probably because it's not that important because it's really this in front of this company, but... It's not an overrun, it's okay. just a, a, the share of the cost that are going to be by the town, as opposed to the check. Okay, well, everything is going to be built back in place. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Um, and number four, uh, this is the Shimon overlay for Church Street. And um, once again, uh, this is the main ballot request. And uh, everything seems to be a lot of the and I think it's pretty much approval. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Um, okay, moving right along. Um, I guess we're to the one day look at the license. Uh, did I speak to you guys? One day look at the license protection by a company. Um, I didn't really look at this cover letter, so I'm going to fumble around a little.
you know, you can probably get away with a one-off, one every great once in a while. That's what it's meant for. That there's something very unique and unusual happening there. And yeah, you're not going to spend fifty thousand dollars or forty thousand sprinkling something for a one-time, you know, like they have the uh, Bennett Save Bennett Hill type of event. But where it's a monthly, and you know, we're consistently looking for it. Uh, the state's made it very clear that that's not to happen. So, uh, and I wrote that letter on behalf of myself and the chief that we will not be circumventing the code with details. Uh, and other questions you have in there were how does like Spencer Pierce Little differ versus uh, fire department? Uh, the difference with them is with the beach coma, adding entertainment to that restaurant reclassifies it as nightclub. Having something that is a rental type of thing like the Spencer Pierce or the fire department doesn't make it a nightclub. We still need the appropriate sign offs and safeguards from, you know, just like we have on the forms that we put out for, you know, police, fire, anything like that. So we know that if we're issuing a one day liquor license or a one day entertainment license, everyone's been brought up to snuff before it gets to you guys for approval. Um, so that, that's where the difference is with Beach Palm Island. Palm Island Grill is probably the only one that would have to fall into that as well. Uh, but they're already sprinkled, so they're, they're covered. Um, and so even though you know, they serve food, they serve alcohol, they're still not a nightclub and you don't have to worry about that because it's a rental? It's sort of how the law falls with the, you know, the fire It depends on the set like um, the, what do you call it, the, what's your place? Great. The Center for the Arts, they, uh, they have a, what's the license you have? No, uh, the, um, the Rod Manson. No, no, it's a certain the food. Uh, oh, how do you know the... Uh, Caterer's uh, license. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Couldn't find it. Ah, I didn't know what that was the hottest part of the night so far. <laughs> um, so they get classified different. The one-time events, um, the ABCC allows up to the uh, 30 one-time events for these, these venues. And that's where we need to stop being careful, too. If they have events that... And, and this is really discretion of the board. If you have something like the fire department or Spencer Pierce that are constantly having events where they serve food, have alcohol, have entertainment, at what point? Well, that's you know, that's why I wrote that email. So it does come that. down to some judgment at some point. Uh, Beach Palmer is very very easy. You know, they 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 are a restaurant. They're classified as a restaurant. And once you have that entertainment, it changes that classification. Uh, the fire hall, where some of them may be, you know, a wedding where they have served wine, and then the next one they have food and bingo. Um, you know, maybe they have a, a band for the wedding type of thing. And typically, the difference there is your nightclub environments versus the wedding with a band is the attraction of the entertainment that you're drawing people in to see the entertainment. That's that's one of the draws. So people are going to come in sit down, drink, and watch the band. Uh, and granted, yeah, some people do that at a wedding too, but the main attraction <laughs> should be <laughs> the wedding. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, some of it's semantics and some of it's, you know, judgment call, but that's what you guys come in. But that's why we've developed those forms to try and make it easier for selectmen so that we have those four sign-offs on every entertainment, every liquor license, so that everyone that needs to have eyes on will, and you guys just have the uh, the job of looking at the form and making your call. Yes, since I yeah. understand you right, then uh, you said that's 30 time limit per year is a little bit less than once uh, a week. So we're probably, there's some of the companies that are using, I don't think we're using them, but they're not that far off from it. Some cases, maybe. And, and again, keep in mind that 30 is liquor license, not entertainment, yeah. um, which there was some confusion with each one. But also, I mean, all of these events, like my continuing education, you know, some of the events are designed to draw the general public and the long term education. So we're probably okay to be a little more cautious about keeping track of some of these things. I think Ellen has been tasked wrong to, to track the number of liquor licenses, one day special licenses that we issue per year, per venue, so that we don't violate the uh, regulations of the ABC states. And the new 
Yeah, well, it gives us the opportunity to ask the questions ahead. Rather than getting it to you, you guys know, geez, have you talked to the police, have you talked to fire, is there any tents, is there anything else going on? And then having to either continue them and you know, have them brought back to a hearing or place conditions on them that, yeah, if everyone else says okay, this, this puts the burden on, on whoever is planning that event to go around and get those permissions and then bring it to you. And then you can judge based on what permissions we're giving and what conditions we a question, Sam. You wrote a letter from the inspection services. The guy you fired the field was under communications. Um, is your explanation that you've given now sufficient? Why do you want to go over this again when you get these pictures? What are you expecting from us? Anything? No, I just wanted to inform you that, you know, the chief and I agree. Uh, again, we, shortly after that was written, we actually by chance got a memo from the state saying exactly the same thing, which made us feel good that we had, felt that we had the correct interpretation of the code. So the last weekend's one day entertainment for the beach corner was the last one that uh, the chief and I was signed off on. And they are in process, from what I understand, going to the state to see if they can get some relief at the state level for their Sunday 4 7 entertainment. Now, do you have any other questions for Sam? Or would you like to come back to this? No, I just, having read that communication, it just wasn't clear about what he was trying to tell us exactly. So I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't that if we could approve this, you know, that he was okay to do this one. Um, so I'm happy. Uh,
second. Um, did uh, you get reading two days? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. This is the other one. Okay. Who's going to speak for this, Martha? <laughs> did you know that? <laughs> no. Did you know this? Oh, about the banner? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> okay. Um, this is for a banner on the bar backstop for a date of request is when do they want to put it up? They want to put it up the Friday after Thanksgiving. Friday after Thanksgiving. And take it down December 15th. Okay. Because the concert uh, is the 13th and 14th. I'm not positive what's there now and when that's coming down. Everything's coming down. It's so Halloween and the race. Well, one thing we can do is Alan will check and we'll try to make sure that whatever's supposed to come down can be come down and we'll try to get some space for you guys. Okay. All right. And that, that's all I know right now. I'm just warning you. I don't know what's up there. All right. Mr. Chen, I have a motion to approve. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, we are now back to communications. And this is the, um, I think this is for us to look at. I'm going to ask Ellen if we need to do anything beyond look at it, whether we have to sign anything. But this is the home rule petition that the town will be filing uh, as executed by the Board of Selectmen attached to a certified voter of public meeting. Your immediate attention to this matter is greatly appreciated. Please advise me of any of the scheduled committee hearings as the town will want to testify at the same. Should you have any questions, please let me know. Please tell us from you. So what's going on? Um, that's already been submitted. Um, the town clerk actually is responsible for submitting that out to town meeting. She sends a certified vote into both um, Senator Tyre and Representative Mayor. So once again, this is a communication to us. This is communication. So, does anyone else have, uh, see anything on our agenda that needs our attention before we open our public hearing? And we're going to open the public hearing for the regular solar special permit application for 136 Main Street. We're going to open this at 7:30. We're going to open it to continue it to. November 25th, so that will be the motion that will be entertained. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go. Uh, why don't you make it then, uh, Dan? I move that we open uh, public hearings for Borrego Solar Permit, Special Permit application for 136 Main Street. All right, so now we need a second. Second. All those in favor? All right. So, now we, if I, if I go ahead. Make a motion to continue this uh, open hearing until November 25th at 7:30. 2014. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, quickest solar meeting we've had yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have we got enough people here to proceed? Um. With the finance committee, like. So yeah, we're here. Here. Over here. We're all here. Do you guys want to move up to the table? There's plenty of seats. Yeah. <laughs> Sit so we can get you. John, your seats around here if you want. You might have to pull some from over there. Table. Uh, 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 I'm afraid I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to get back. All right, tonight we have a very important um, we have a very important question that would really behoove us to take great attention to, to try to come up with some understanding. The Municipal Building Committee has taken tremendous time and effort to put together a tremendous presentation with a lot of work to try to move us forward and they'll explain some of the things as to why it's extraordinarily important for us to move forward on this. We have a, a police station that is drastically in need 
uh, replacement is very much in failure. And the town hall is in the mix because of obviously it being so small. I know we're going to have some ideas. There could be personal ideas. There could be ideas that are put forth by boards. But out of respect for the municipal building committee, tonight I would like to have some consensus, if possible, on one of the locations that Eric is going to explain to everyone. The planning board, we were all asked as a board to kind of make some sort of decision on what they thought might be best, was good enough to uh, follow that procedure. Maybe we can ask them a little later on how they got to that that point. But the the initial ability is work very hard. We're kind of dead in the water. We really need to move forward on something. It doesn't have to be the final thing, as Eric's going to explain tonight. It could be this, and it could be some sort of amelioration of this, or it could be, um, you know, uh, another combination thereof. But we've got to kind of tear down the ones that are in front of us anyway tonight. So that being said, Eric, are you ready? Should I move the microphone? Jeff, yeah, to clarify, I'm under the impression tonight we were hoping that we leave the room with an actual decision on the site. Yeah. Why is that not one site, correct? I meant to say that, didn't I say anything? I, I, I you know, you meant options for buildings or you meant site, that's why I was curious. No, site is what okay. we're having. Okay. Right. I thought it would be an option. Yeah, so I, I have the impression that we're right now we're trying and to Some of the options have sites on your stuff. So. Well, why don't we let Eric clarify mm -hmm. that? And the thought that I wanted to put forth, Kathleen, and thank you for clarifying his consensus. You can live with the consensus, I think. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, Eric Swan, 14 Old Farm Way, uh, chair of the Municipal Building Committee, also a member of the Zoning Board of Appeal. Um, and it's a great opportunity to have all the committees here and boards tonight to discuss this issue. I was on the Public Safety Complex Committee and sort of uh, came to a uh, screeching stop and don't really think that the issue ever got a chance to to get out there. So a lot of information has been collected and in an attempt to share that with you, um, put together this, this presentation. Um, not to discount it, but it came together fairly quickly and so hopefully we can get through all the slides in sequence and then have a logical discussion about the information that's being presented tonight. So first, just a general introduction, which I don't think the project really needs an introduction for anybody sitting in this room. Uh, we'll go through uh, project history, uh, existing facility issues, uh, project proposed project schedule, or just the schedule of understanding how we can get from today to the end uh, to resolve the issues, uh, programs, in terms of what's being proposed, site options, uh, and then budgets. So, um, as Jeff had said, the real effort is to take the information and boil it down. And as we go through the uh, history, I think the I think it's all clear to everybody that the, the issue has started in 2004 uh, and it's been touched upon up until 2012 and really the uh, Capital Planning Committee, Bob's report, uh, really put the issue on the table. Since then, it's still gone around in cycles in several committees without really, it hasn't moved forward. Uh, the issue is, is getting to be dire. The issue um, is getting to be critical. Uh, the issue in terms of um, operations of services that are provided to the town, uh, I don't think the residents are aware of it. Um, and it's also costing all the residents money by sitting idle and not taking action in the direction. So from 2012, uh, Public Safety Site Selection Committee, Public Safety Complex Committee, uh, and then the, the now Municipal Building Committee. So and with that, go back to the May 2012, people said it, um, is eloquently, there's no need to rewrite the, the, uh, the opening paragraphs, that we would reuse the same same phrases, just the facilities are outdated, they continue to operate well past their planned life 
span. And two, they just don't meet the current standards of, of operations today. And that's, that's both for the, the functions of the police department, and I think the town hall has outgrown its space, and it's obvious with the trailers that are uh, located at the town hall. So with that, uh, tonight to have package uh, to give to Larry as the formal official uh, request for funding um, for both the town hall and the police station, the documentation backup that contains uh, letters from the police chief and from Sam noting the issues at both the town hall and the police station. We talk about them in separate items, but obviously they're all combined in one building. And if you could read some of the issues that are up there, it's Massachusetts General Law building codes as well as OSHA violations, and then there's just um, deplorable conditions that none of us would, would, would want to work in as our day job from uh, rodents and snakes that appear, uh, to flies that are um, biting people that are working there. I think we've, we've gone over this, but to bring it up in length tonight is point that we, we shouldn't be have to bring this up again. Yes, the story needs to be told to the residents so that they understand what's coming before them, so that they can understand uh, the weight of the options that are coming up. But um, it gets down to improper fire separations from the first and second floor. Uh, the building is not uh, an accessible building. Uh, the building codes, there's inadequate um, restroom facilities, especially if they're holding functions or uh, town meetings such as uh, sort of board select meetings or any board member meetings. Not to mention a uh, sprinkler system is lacking for the public assembly. We can go on to um, you know the health issues again for for deplorable conditions for the police department to work in. The issues upstairs are more about space and having people working on top of each other and having um, the services of, of town being done in the space of the record filing keeping can't be made, but downstairs it's a whole other matter. And as mentioned before, I think most people in, in public uh, fear the police because they have a some little fear of, of whatever they did wrong uh, a while back that, that might come out. And uh, they like to keep the police at a far distance. So the public really just does not know what it's like to walk through that door and get beyond the best and if anybody in this room is not in back there, you have to go back there and see it yourself. Um, Deputy Chief, you want to mention, you know, the call tonight if you were walking in here to set up? What's that? The call tonight? Actually, I can defer to so Well, Sam was there. Uh, yeah, as I was prepping to leave tonight, uh, there was an alarm going off. It turns out that yet another pump failure at Town Hall for our septic system, causing a backup, causing us to call once again for an emergency pump out. Uh, and most likely we'll be replacing a pump tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's continuous. Uh, it is it's bleeding us dry. Uh, you know, we keep mandating the bandits. Uh, and then from there we go to operational issues uh, from the police department. I guess I was surprised and thinking and, and taking the tour as things were being cleaned up from, from previous overflow and drywalls being patched and painted. It was actually, a, we all saw the storage, a uh, small storage unit out in the visitor parking space. Um, that I was thinking to myself, where, where does the police department actually meet? Well, the police department meets in town hall on Friday because nobody's there on Friday. That's the place, that's the space that they have to congregate with their officers to get the message out. And if there ever was, or has been an issue of um, emergency needs or inviting other services from other towns within the state in order to hold a meeting in Newbury, it's fairly, uh, I guess it would be embarrassing for the police force to say we can't even meet our own stationary park. And, and that just then leads to, um, um, leads to the morale of the officers that are serving us. We've all had um, bad days of work, and if the police department continuously having bad days because of poor environment, because of poor air quality, because of uh, flooding issues, and not really uh, focusing on the job at hand, then well, the residents of town are all the ones that are suffering for that. Uh, officer safety issues. I've heard the word liability before, but if um, I don't have first-hand experience, 
experience with it, but I'm sure there are some people that take, that take them into custody and get brought through out of the cruiser and into the front door, and they're trying anything and everything not to take them into a, a cell in just those tight, cramped quarters, um, not to mention that they have to go through the public access of that vestibule. Um, any one of us could be standing here trying to get a, a boat permit or a dog permit license and uh, have the need to step out and watch somebody who's uh, restrained come out of a cruiser and be brought into the police station because that's the only way to bring them in. Then from there, once they bring them in and book them, uh, the, the lack of the secure area in which to perform that task, plus then uh, the issues of not being able to hold them in a cell because of multiple deficiencies. She has a letter, I have a copy of it, it's not out uh, there for, um, we have it, but it's, it's not part of our reports, but it's the Department of Public Safety that continuously fails the facility every year on inspection because the facility just isn't up to the standards, uh, professional standards in which there is a state um, regulation that governs the, the, um, the layout and the issues of the professional facility. So I think I went through all the, 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 the points that you're looking at, uh, temporary trailers that are now going on in permanent trailers. But, uh, you know, but our services to our, our residents shouldn't be made out of temporary facilities. So we move on to the town hall. The town hall doesn't share exactly all the issues. Um, and probably for the most part, for the residents that walk in and conduct business, they don't see most of those issues. Uh, there's a perfectly nice um, photo of the town hall meeting space, nice table and chairs, but even last Wednesday morning, the municipal building committee was leaking, was, was meeting, <laughs> the roof was leaking uh, in two locations, uh, right in the first two rows of the chairs. Of course, they're not over the table, but it was leaking. And I think that was a very severe storm on the ocean. But you know, in terms of rain, there's been other storms, and so those leaks are something that um, I think happens frequently, more often than not. And that's not to mention that that rain, once it hits the roof, or whatever water comes off the roof of town hall and fills up some of the window wells of the police station uh, in the basement, and they have further issues uh, with water the windows. So then we come to uh, project schedule, and for any uh, Anybody in the uh, development to architecture and construction, you need three things. You need a, a cost, you need a schedule, um, and you need a program. And so the program takes us from today, right now, to as soon as we get everything found the line, we made decisions, we moved forward in an orderly process, and the town voted accordingly. Um, we'd be looking at somewhere around 2018, at the beginning of the year, in order to open the facility. So we're still years away from solving the issues that are getting worse and that we're spending eighty to $100,000 of, of fixing on per year and that's going to go on until we resolve the issue. So we really don't have time to sit and, and overly debate or kick this can down the road even further. Uh, the Municipal Building Committee um, is filing a funding request uh, tonight and then uh, we we will focus on trying to hold some public uh, workshops. And as, as that funding and as that uh, engineer architect and study uh, unfolds in terms of creating an actual uh, facility solution, we can find the proper location for it. Then I think the municipal building, or at least I'm prepared to help uh, take mission from what, what it is to, to getting the word out so the residents understand the needs that we and uh, the recommendation on the table. So the police department, I mean, the yeah, police department program, um, it's small, I don't expect you to read it on the screen. It's in uh, the CSS architects report that we issued in July, in July, uh, and it's, I've taken it and uh, put it back into Excel so that I could um, ask the chief and the deputy chief to review this and they have and they've put a summary next to it. But what needs to be done is apples to apples. I need to get the order from the report into this document into uh, 
the need to issue our columns so that the, every space is explained as to what it does and why why it's required. Um, if you could read the, the reporter, if you have, I think the first thing um, that you would notice is that this is the, um, the existing column on the right. And what you would notice is that there's a whole lot of zeros. And so for the program being proposed, there's a lot of spaces that just aren't in the police station, just don't exist. Um, from a Sally Port, uh, Sally Port um, to the conference room that I mentioned, to a property, proper entrance, vestibule, and those are, and then a whole uh, slew of spaces when you get to the uh, correctional holding cells. And those spaces are, are standard in contemporary police stations but other towns and municipalities are From that, uh, you know, the police department, I think every time I have a discussion, I'm always told that it's transient, that we see the cruisers lined up, that we see the officers in uniforms, but nobody really goes to town uh, to the police station to see them. There are a total of, of 21 officers, and, you know, at times, there's only three people on some shifts. Is that correct? Four uh, people? Times there are two. Two. So you have a dispatch, you have a patrol, but you also have officers coming and going to work where they need locker rooms um, to change in and out of uniforms, um, other officers to meet and discuss uh, issues, and we also have male and female officers, and we have just one one locker room, and so issues of um, it's an issue. And then here's a chart of the. Uh, of the town hall, and there are numerous departments, and I think the graph the chart here is really just trying to show the numerous interconnections between departments. And if I had a little more time, I probably would have made uh, another slide that showed the interaction between the police department and the town hall staff in, in terms of just how much um, interaction there is between the town hall and the police department. We come up with a town hall uh, program. Town hall right now is basically 3,200 square feet on the first floor, the town hall floor. Obviously, the basement is the facts and ties. Uh, and what this program is proposing is there's about 2,900 of new space that's added to the 3,200 for a program that's just about 6,000, just over 6,000 square feet. Of that 6,000 square feet, or 2,900 that I mentioned was new. The trailers outside, including the new inspection service trailer, it's about 2,000 square feet in temporary trailers that we now have outside of the town hall. So then we get to the great um, discussion on, on options. And so here the options are simplified for the thought of how do you logically think through these and organize them so that so that you can limit limit the options and not not quite be as specific. The first option is a new town hall, a new play station on the existing town hall site. Remove the trailers, basically demolish the old structure, and build a new facility on the existing town hall site. Option B then says, okay, the police station goes somewhere else in town. Um, we have a few sites that we'll go through and the town hall gets renovated and they're separated and the synergy between the police and the town hall departments um, is lost by the distance of space wherever that somewhere is. The next option is the town hall goes somewhere and the police station gets built on the site of the existing town hall. The town hall would have to be demolished you know, with the spaces and the, and the standards um, you cannot just retrofit town hall into uh, paint and doors and call the police station. Uh, and option D is renovate town hall with an addition, uh, renovate the police station with an addition. And I threw option E on there for the public safety complex because I think it, it um, well, two things. I, I thought it was going in the right direction because there was some sense of, of synergy of spaces and putting two departments together and getting some value out of um, complex, instead of building a separate building for everybody, but building a joint building where you could have one lobby, you could have uh, 
larger meeting room that there's two meeting rooms for each facility to be brought together. That could be a great asset uh, to the town as a, as a meeting room. Um, and also the, the thought of the public safety complex on fire company to, company to property uh, was appealing because it was adjacent to the town hall and now you had um, a lot of public facilities and so anybody in town or anybody coming to town can understand where um, the city government, where the interactions of town working is. So from these now we'll go into a little more detail, and I guess as we all know, and other people have brought up, is that the town really has three distinct communities. Um, we have Palm Island, we have um, Old Town, the Upper Green, and we have Byfield. If you think your property is in one of the red zones, they didn't do it, and mean to leave you off. It's, it's kind of an intent just to give it the squint test to say, okay, what does our town look like in terms of um, area and size? And the best I could determine of just taking the scale and drawing a box around the, out the total outline and then putting a center to it uh, is somewhere between Boston and Hay Street, just off of Route 1, is the approximate center of town um, as you would uh, measure that. So on it, uh, we have option uh, A, which is in the upper right, which is town hall currently. Uh, we have Another option, which is the town of Forest, right next to the transfer station. Um, there's an option on, down on Governors, and there's another option just off of 95, um, off Apple Street. It's Fruit Street. Close. <laughs> 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 Existing town hall and site just to get an understanding of, of, of you know, survey and plan where the um, existing structure is, where the two trailers that I'm missing, obviously the new inspectional trailer which starts off here and runs not quite to the midpoint, but fills up and heats up um, the parking spaces. Right now there's only about 17 parking spaces left at the town hall. Again, here's a plan from uh, the CSS report in, in engaging them and having them um, review the existing facilities, having them propose a program. Uh, they did a quick layout. This is not meant to be the design. The rendering I'm going to show you is not meant to be the rendering. Uh, it's meant to just be suggestive of what the program, the amount of square footage might look like so that you can size up a volume uh, and understand the plan how how these spaces might go together. We'd say that the, the spaces in terms of the layout um, for, <coughs> for a building is extremely efficient with a lobby and a four, single double-loaded corridor. Um, there's not a lot of fluff to the, to the layout they provide. The green space <coughs> on the left would be the town, the town hall, and the gray, red and blue spaces on the right would be the new police station. You would enter the um, town Hall from um, High Road as you do now, except the building would be built lower, so the accessibility issues of moving into the Town Hall uh, would be resolved. There'd be some a nice lobby, a larger meeting space, and then there would be a connection that would take you over to an elevator, a two-sided elevator, so that you would have a division between the police station and the Town Hall, but you would have just one elevator uh, in the building police station would actually be entered from a lower level um, and then you would come up the stairs or come up the elevator to a lobby to the second floor for both the police station and the town hall. So it's a two-story building and uh, I'm sorry for entering, but it, it's tempting to show you that there's two stories plus a story down in which to enter at the lower level and get to take advantage of um, the existing site boundaries. So in thinking about it and going through the program that was, uh, that was proposed, the new police station is about 9,000 square feet and uh, cut out the plans thinking that if, if you're going to think of a police station anywhere else in town, it's, it's about the same layout minus the, uh, the line of green of the town hall that you could have 
building that's um, skinny and two stories. We have a building that's uh, double the size and single uh, single floor. The lower plans are showing uh, a renovated town hall in which uh, an handicap ramp is brought up to the front door in order to make it accessible. And then uh, not much happens to the uh, first floor plan, but in the basement of uh, the inspectional service trailer possibly go away by having a few offices where there are windows towards the front with storage uh, restroom facilities in the back. So option B1, which is the somewhere else, um, police station moves somewhere else in town. Uh, it's been known for a while. The governor's uh, has uh, offered up a parcel to put the police station on, be on group one. John, get that light off and then download it. There. Um, so the site is at the very corner of the governor's property on Route One. Uh, I think people know or know as they come across the bridge and they come to a parking lot on the left. There's one house uh, on the right, and it would be tucked in this corner, and then. Uh, the grade rises up. I don't think you really notice that in passing by because the vegetation is um, dense along the road. Mm -hmm. uh, to that end, here's Elm Street at the enter entrance to Governor's. As I understand there, um, sewage treatment plant is something located in this corner, and it's a distance of about 3,800 um, feet to the site. Uh, they've also offered, in terms of offering the site, to offer connection to their sewer treatment plant. So the cost to do that at $200 a square foot is some $750,000. Uh, and that doesn't take into account uh, any special road work or number of culverts that are hit or ledge that's there. That's based on height cost in installation, or is that based on pavement too? Highway standards? Highway standard pavement is much more expensive than regular street. That's my master's. Uh, I mean, from New, the public street. So street, the question okay. was asked to uh, Newbury, uh, Newbury Court. Uh, what are the what all the I guess that's a question I'll have to follow up on. Okay. I mean, it would seem appropriate that that would be a difficult cost for installing a sewer and improved road access. Yeah. Yeah. Or is there bifield water here? Yes. There's another one. I don't know. There's a connection. Isn't there a connection there to rally water there? There is. I don't know. Um, I don't know if anybody walked the site and comments on it. There is a great change of um, 10 or, or, or 10 feet or so that's shown on the, on the grades. Uh, the ground does rise up here, and so you're coming into a, a semi sloping site, and then there's an old that rises right here. Uh, there's also this funny line on the plan that says limited flood plain or limited flood line, which goes right through the site, which probably has some ramifications. Um, I haven't walked the site, so I can't say whether you know, there's, there's ledge sticking out uh, or whether the slope is, is, is greater in terms of coming right off the roof or not. But that's one proposed site. And the, the, some, the police station somewhere else in town is or can be if the site has um, zero or no cost to it. The budgets that are proposed at the end uh, try to size up the sites or any site that really has been suggested to this point has uh, no dollar cost to it. <coughs> and then on that, on the plan, somebody drew at some point previously uh, a simple station, which is 4,500 square feet. 
So it's a two-story uh, police station would be 9,000 square feet. You could drive in, get parking spaces, it's a sally port entry, I assume, uh, and then other public parking spaces in order to attend the building. I don't know if there's any traffic issues that are coming on and off with one at that location, I would assume probably make that work for the building. The next site that's been discussed for a while is the town forest. Uh, the town forest is right next to the transfer station. Uh, it's between uh, A Street, which is this curtain road from the bottom. Oh, and then uh, Boston Road that the transfer station is on. I think everyone knows where it is. There's recently been a uh, perk test last week. The report uh, is not in yet. Um, but 12 people tests, uh, 12 peepholes were dug, and all 12 failed. So the options of what it takes to, to put either water or sewer on um, the town for a site is not known, but it's known to assume that the septic system um, would be more expensive uh, at this location. Eric, do you know how far down they got to the peepholes? 12 feet? 12 feet. Uh, there was some simple talk for a mention of a uh, site across the street, at Sled Road. It, it had to change in elevation of 10 feet as you come off uh, onto the site, and we assume they possibly have the same uh, per test issues. So this option C, which says, okay, let's think about this in the total reverse order instead of just getting so focused on the police station and town hall and let's move the town hall somebody else where else and let's put the police station for the town hall um, to try to figure out if there's merits or value in the um, in switching the options. Uh, there are probably only a few um, and, and here you have to buy an existing facility in building a new, uh, a new town hall somewhere else uh, in dealing with uh, septic sewer issue and building and renovating the town hall into a police station with septic and sewer issues, uh, you'll see rises to take that option uh, off the table. So the question is, what, what, uh, what would be out there, what would be available, and how, how could the, the space of 6,000 square feet for town hall plus any other apartments that may um, find a need or, or have facility issues to fill that up? the 6,000 of the town hall, plus putting 9,000 of the police station here, though that it's slightly larger, you would still need some additional space to complete add-on for the police station in order to put a sally port um, and a new entrance for a police station on the site. Then we come to option B, uh, which is a renovation uh, addition to town hall, in which there's both an addition to the town hall space, and there's basically a new two-story police station that gets butted up and added on to the town hall. Uh, some parking improvements, uh, not great many new spaces, but uh, access around the building so that police can drive in and access the Sally Court and you have a proper flow around the building. <clears throat> this option was, was drawn for the Public Safety Complex uh, Committee, in which it adds inspectional service department uh, spaces um, on the north side of the existing town hall, and adds the police station uh, for where trailers currently exist. I think the amount of work that's done, plus uh, upgrades to systems or improvements to the buildings, even though this option is a renovation addition, it still means that there's some temporary facilities involved in making this happen. There would be a second floor to uh, the police station. And then again, the, the Public Safety Complex Committee and Fire Company number two, um, having a, a combined facility, I think uh, some of the issues of this certainly got off to the wrong foot when people reviewed the plans uh, and saw an exercise room and thought, of, Taj Mahal, but really the exercise room and some of those other spaces on the upstairs were um, were meant for future growth. So 
the show this to think about what we're solving for right now, but also to keep an eye in mind on what, if we build the building and we build it properly, uh, we have a building that could last 30 to 50 years. And that, by choosing a proper design, by choosing a building that has some growth, limited, some growth space, and um, basically is, is funded once, we have great advantages in terms of the overall cost um, and providing value back to the residents. Uh, this is just a plan of the public safety complex. So then we have a comparison of some police stations and facilities and a few interesting items. All the projects on this page uh, were built within the last eight years. And so here's the town of uh, Sherburne with 16 FPEs. We have 21, and um, they have an 8,000 square foot uh, building. Eric, what's an FPE? Hold on. Define FPE. Full-time equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, population size. Right. So they just some of the general ones. Uh, Orleans has a population of um, 6,315. The in 2010 census has a population of 6,666. Uh, and so there's no one um, facility out there that is the model. Uh, you know, the state does have some model high schools and said if you take this design and tweak a little bit for your site and use this plan, um, there could be some uh, funding and uh, some approvals for doing that. But there is no one um, police station facility, at least in, in trying to find one where I could find a community that's exactly like Newbury. Uh, special so there really isn't anybody like this. Um, and, yeah. uh, and just more of Harvard has a population of 6,000. They only have 14 officers, but they have a 9,000 square foot uh, facility. And then it goes, uh, Littleton has 21 um, FPEs, but they have 14,000 square foot. So I think this hopes to try to put the program in some sort of perspective that when we meant the new police station program of 9,000 square feet compared to many of these other ones um, is actually on the smaller, is on the small side of the bottom end of the scale. Uh, to that end, we don't have the exact dates, but we're hoping to have those to try to figure out the dollar value of some of these were built five years ago and then the square footage is put off. Uh, our square footage for construction for project budget just for construction costs versus the square foot is about four hundred and twenty four dollars a square foot that does include uh, demolition which some of these others um, do not I think it's um, I'm not here to champion the cost and writing the columns because I haven't fed them all out and you never know quite what's inside of them. So I haven't done that that part of it yet. I would say that I'm looking at um, Salisbury Police Station, the information that they just reported that they're, they're looking at a station that's double the square footage, double the officers, uh, and higher in the cost of about 480 square foot. Uh, so depending on when these were built, when the recession, and um, how they actually, what they actually put into this number, uh, anywhere from 294 to, to 454, I think would be somewhere around Four hundred dollars a square foot for the type of spaces that we're building. Question: Do these all represent brand new facilities, no rehab of an existing building? I can't answer that. You know, I haven't had time to call and figure out each each that one. Can I follow up on that? Why have to use Rowley? Rowley is a bad example of a place that should really be accomplished for this. Really? Closer. Okay. Rawley is working out of temporary trailers because they opened their police station years ago. And the other information I was gathering is found out that um, the town of Stoughton is looking into new facilities. Um, they just built their, uh, they had a new police station in um, 
1994, and they've, they've already outgrown it, and it's already outdated, so they're, they're looking for a new one as well. We don't have the current list of the most current stations out there so that we can use those uh, as accurate costs to today's dollars. Eric, can I make a point? Yep. Um, when you're looking at a building for the police department, these, I can guarantee 90% of these are strictly police department. In Newbury, the police department has a lot more thrown in. We handle emergency management. When there's an emergency management situation, my whole police station shuts down because I have to run it as an emergency operating center. So we have the emergency management. We have the CBER. We have the harbor master. We have the animal control. We have a lot thrown on our plate, and we're cramming more and more into this cramped facility, which can't function as a police station, never mind everything else everybody wants. So my, I, I apologize if I sound mad, I'm not mad, I'm frustrated. Um, and I'm hoping today we get a little bit of direction and a little bit of leadership and maybe make some decisions to move forward with something. Because this is about the fourth inc inclination of this type of committee I've seen since I've been here. And I've worked in Newbury for 27 years. Had many chances to leave, I love the town, I love the people. But this is the type of thing that frustrates me about this town. We go to committee, to committee, to committee. We discuss the same things over and over and over. No one will step up. No one will take a leadership role. No one will make a decision. So the voters never hear anything. All I'm asking today, and whatever you come up with, whether you decide you don't need a building, that's fine. If you decide you need a building, let's pick a direction and let's move forward. Because I am sick of trying to tap dance around my people downstairs, explaining to them we're doing the best we can. I have the greatest people in the world working for me. If I was a chief of any other police department with the conditions we have, we would be inundated with grievances, workplace complaints, OSHA would be called. It would be a disaster. And it's a credit to the men and women down there that this stuff hasn't happened. And they continue to do a fantastic job day after day without complaint with zero direction, and that's all I'm asking for tonight. So please, when we leave here tonight, let's have a direction, pick somebody to run with it. We have a lot of good people doing a lot of excellent work, spinning their wheels, wasting their time, because nobody can get together as a town. We can't get together with a consensus. This is the direction we want to go. Let's go this direction, put it before the voters. If they vote it down, so be it. But at least give them something to work with, and that, that's all I'm going to say. My frustration has boiled over, and I apologize. Um, but yeah, we, we have a little bit more on our plate with the harbor master and emergency management and everything else than just the police station. So we don't have the room to run a police department adequately. When we hold a juvenile, we do not have the facilities to properly secure a juvenile. I have to call an officer in off the road to sit and babysit a juvenile because we're in violation of every federal law in the world if we secure a juvenile in our facility. So if an officer gets taken off the road to sit and babysit a juvenile or a female, or if we have an arrest that's going to be there more than a couple of hours, our holding cells are so deplorable, they fail inspection every year. I have to hire somebody to come in and drive that arrestee, that prisoner, to Middleton to be booked. It is such a dysfunctional atmosphere we're working in now. All I'm asking for is a direction. That's it. And hopefully, we have a lot of great minds in here tonight, and I completely understand the financial situation the town is in, but Jesus, we built libraries, we buy ball fields. Let's, let's think about public safety just a little bit. I'm done, thank you. As you were, I apologize. <laughs> you shouldn't apologize. Well, well said, Michael. Um, Eric, do you think it would do us to go back to the options that we considered as a slide so we can look at them? No, we've got the, uh, the budget for now. So, um, we had a budget spreadsheet that basically takes the information out of the CSS uh, architect's report from the Public Safety Complex Committee and then um, the Municipal Building Committee uh, and put it back and try to put it in a spreadsheet so that each uh, 
site, each option uh, could have um, a life of its own. It started off as a very even horse race without much uh, separation between the options, and we were working on um, getting out or getting more information, such as the PERT tests. Uh, but you know, we're at that point where we do need engineering and studying to take uh, one of these, or maybe a PERT option and a alternate. Uh, and really move it forward to make it accurate. The costs that I'm even showing on this slide are a little bit inflated. Uh, I didn't want to undershoot or underestimate the issue. I didn't want to scare or horrify anybody either. But um, you know, if you look at the A uh, to option um, D, there's not much. It's six hundred uh, to eight hundred thousand dollars difference between the four options, which. I would think on the merits of trying to pick an option that solves the facility issues that somewhere between moving forward and making a decision for all the right reasons um, that seem to be overpriced uh, or have a few more costs today to work diligently to bring down um, to bring down that cost to the preferred uh, or the most economical solution. So, we don't really have a champion. I thought somewhere through the process of gathering some of this information that these options on budget alone would vary greatly and then it, it would be a no-brainer to pick, pick the option best on here's the program, here's the least cost, we get everything we want for the most value. Why wouldn't we just call forward? Eric, I don't see option E, but I'm not even Option E is the Public Safety Complex Committee, and that was just brought up to talk about the synergy of spaces and two buildings together, but it's not uh, the current option that's running. I think the, the idea is that, the, that both the sale, although we do have some people on our committee that are still trying to think of uh, or think that's a good idea and how that might um, still come back, but that's if, if, uh, it's, it's just not one of the options being considered at the moment. But I guess that my feelings from it. Is it possible that he can finish his presentation and we can have a discussion? Right. Just because we're almost there. All right. So we're almost there, and, and this, the, the cost uh, spreadsheets uh, are trying to focus on both and each option to create a, uh, a town hall and to create a police department and then add the two together so that each option could be. Um, it is possible that some of the options could be separated or broken apart where they could be phased uh, and to see where the top real costs lie in terms of uh, construction, demolition, septic to sewer, um, site costs, and then uh, the current amount of other costs that are just rolled up into in the CSS report as a lump sum number. But FF&E, uh, moving temporary facilities, are, are all items that are broken out because each of the, the options have a slight variation as to um, you know, what the cost would be. If, if the police station is built somewhere else on a standalone site and there are no uh, temporary facilities because the police station would stay for this now until a brand new station is built and they would move right in. So there would be some moving costs but there would be no temporary facilities associated with that. And sure, it's probably pretty hard to read the screen, um, but that's that's what's being developed to try to take each option with the site, with the budget, and <coughs> make sure the nuances are understood cost-wise for each option. And that brings us back, this is the last slide, so thanks for looking at 34 slides. I to keep the theme, but mark it to the public. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here we are. Lights. Thank you back on schedule in terms of today and uh, from what the Chief said, trying to move forward and how is the Joint Committee and Boards, how can we do that? How can we, how can the Municipal Building Committee do more or focus our efforts to bring something to the table? How can other departments uh, help uh, pick up the ball and how can, how can we move forward? And it seems that um, if we did limit or pick site to study the, uh, full, the full breadth of the, the issue, program, and schedule that all then you realize that that could be taken to the residents. Uh, you can't take four options with two versions and no options to the residents because you'll, you'll lose one. 
we lose them on the first option and the second. So that's that's the slides and the information. I hope it was somewhat clear. It's probably hard to see, but please um, uh, we'll probably print a few copies if needed and or uh, it's available for PDF to be sent out or picked up. So thanks. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. I just want to make one comment. Uh, I've seen many presentations made in my career in construction in the academic institutional communities. This is one of the finest presentations that I've seen. Uh, and I think we owe Eric and the committee high marks for a job well done. Uh, this is exceptional work. Uh, and it very articulately gave us a, a path forward listening to what the chief had to say. And I just really think we shouldn't understate the amount of time and energy and professionalism that's gone into this work. I would suggest if it's possible, Tracy, that this be posted on our website with bullets. And when you turn the website on, you should be drawn to this before you get drawn to anything else. And I think this adds clarity to, to the issues at hand uh, in a pathway forward. I would have been doing more. Uh, can, can I just clarify a question of clarity? Option A was that new town hall and new police station on the existing site? Yes. And option D was renovated police station renovated. Uh, yes. I have a handout for the options, so if anybody wants to keep them. What, 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 is it, what is the main difference between A and B? Well, I need to do it once Age, all new places. You can't find the old building. Well, does, that, does that mean demolishing the existing building? Yes. So there's relocation of both temporarily while the new, the new facility is built. Yeah. Right. In, Thank in you. option D, is there also relocation at both town hall and the police department temporarily? Yes. Yes. Because I, I was trying to understand what this non-construction costs were, and I'm not sure that's going to cover relocation. But maybe it will. Did the, 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 the non-construction costs in that cost template include relocation? Yes. Yeah. And and they're they're Eric's fond numbers, so they're in there as a placeholder to make to make them equal. The sewer costs are listed at 750. Relocation for temporary trailers is 100,000. Uh, moving, whether it was town hall and police station, was $20,000. It was just one department, it was $10,000. So I'm not going to say that they're exactly accurate numbers. I think coming before the finance committee, going before the planning board, I've been waving that chart around, but not wanting to let go of it because it's, it's, it's uh, in my mind, I think I have a pretty good sense of numbers and costs, but it's not something that I wanted to issue a make public that someone would run with, and it does need to be that out. But you know, we need some, hire some professionals to do that. Eric, this is uh, what I had asked maybe to go back and put on the screen. Is it possible to go back and put these options up that contain the numbers, the cost, so that we can kind of lines up with the cost, which the cost would be? And the only other thing I would like to say is Eric really wrote it out pretty well in that first square that is in the beginning of uh, his documents and that's what he was asking us to do tonight and we're almost you know seeming to work in that direction but he wanted to present for you all and work on the day. And he was asking us to come to the join and understanding each project in home and scope, cost, site, and schedule of this project. And that's the questions that we should really ask tonight. So that maybe, as Eric had asked us as the meeting goal, is to come to a joint understanding on a single option, or at least a single option slash some type of other um, combination of that single option for the preliminary design and engineering. And like Kathleen had said to me, could be a location, but it also is an option because it contains maybe multiple locations 
depending on what we choose. So I'm not sure the best way to proceed how to you know, look at how we get to that point. But I can remember when Eric asked the planning board to do it, maybe the finance committee to do it, and maybe the selectors to do it, maybe a month and a half ago or a month ago, and the planning board was able to reach some sort of decision, John. Can you remember in the voice of Sarani, can you kind of remember some of the things that brought you to that conclusion? Yeah, I'll try and then if uh, Kathleen and John want to step in. The, um, first of all, uh, we met with Eric uh, twice. Uh, first on, um, on August 20th, and then again on August 23rd. And it, uh, on his initial presentation, basically we had a lot of this information, and then we sat down as a board on the 3rd and reviewed all of the options, and then we sat down again as a board on the 17th and reviewed all the options. And the things that we were concerned with were a, from a planning perspective, and that is the location of functions and how they make sense for the town, uh, both now and in the future. And so, and we also looked at the stark precedent of where the seat of government has been traditional. And so, with that in mind, we looked at all of the sites, and in terms of location, concluded that there was strong precedence for the location of the upper green as the, as the seat of government in the town of That um, it had traditionally been there and that today with the town uh, the hall and the police function there along with the homes, along with the park, along with the various buildings that are there, it really is the sense of this is the town. This, this is where the town center is. And, and we think that even though we have these three places where people live on, on the island and along Route 1A and, and in Byfield, that we, we sense that this, of all the places, is the sense that even the people in those communities think, well, that's the center of town. And so, so we, we believe pretty strongly that it makes sense that the seat of government, from a planning perspective, remain in the upper green areas. And then we, uh, had information because, of course, we cheated it because Martha's on the committee, of course, and she's, you know, our information piece. And so we held an awful lot of information that she was able to give us. Um, and the, the, the second item is really one of the relationship between the police function uh, of the town and the active governance. And, and, and and as the chief was saying, here, more than most towns, those two are really intertwined. And, and um, from all of the things that Eric talked about, the permits, the fees, the, uh, and, and, and what the chief talked about, of FEMA activity, and things like that, having those functions separate makes the town work much worse. But having them together gives the symbiotic relationship that we think makes sense. So we didn't put a, have an opinion about whether A was better than D, or yeah, D, or D was better than A. But we did have the opinion that they ought to be together, and they ought to be somewhere around the town to reinforce the historic presence. Eric, you summed it up. Do you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Um, John had spoken to me a little bit about that, and it, it kind of resonated with me for the same reason as we've seen the resonate with him. I know that is somewhat emotional, but it is almost also cerebral. So I think now I know Fred wanted to say something, and uh, I know that the other questions, uh, unless someone has a better way to do it, I think the best thing to do is to dive into questions that certainly are relevant to moving towards what Eric had asked us to do. And if you're going to make statements that really don't have a thread of evidence or some next step involved, probably be careful because someone might ask you those questions. So I mean, let's try to move this forward to at least be out of here tonight to something that peers down A, B, C, and D to maybe one or maybe Oh, yeah, I got a couple of points. 
question to Jeff. And I don't have any notes, so I'm probably going to bounce around a little bit. Fred Thurlow, in case you don't know. <laughs> uh, she needs your address, Fred. Pardon? Your address, please. 26 Marsh Avenue. Um, first of all, I don't know how many people know this, but the town hall and the police station are, are, all they are is a former Grange Hall. That's what that building was originally. You're dealing with a site of only three quarters of an acre. You're dealing with a site that backs up to a swamp. In fact, the, the street, uh, uh, the, the, uh, Morgan Ave was a swamp at one time. With the, the green pond was connected to the, to the swamp in the back there. The fire station was built partially on filled land that was Ernie Gilford's dump when I was a kid. That's not good land at all. Um, uh, let's see, where am I going with this? <laughs> my, my point is, that site is not a very good site. Now, yes, that's the town center. It is, I believe, but that wasn't always the town center. At one point, the town hall was up on State Street, up at State Street, as you enter the, uh, the cemetery, the Oak Hill Cemetery, the town hall was there. Then when Newburyport expanded, it was moved from there, and I believe the next location was out next to Bob Brown's house on Middle Road. There's a, there's a town hall in Byfield, and there's a town hall here. It, it, it has shifted around over time. To me, we need new buildings. We don't need renovated buildings. And I don't think that site is big enough. And the site is probably big enough for a police station, but it just doesn't have the space for a town hall, for the parking you need, for meetings and things. It just, it just doesn't have the space. State and your background so people know what you're coming from, too. My background? I know what you do. I lived in this town all my life. No, but you're saying because I'm a city planner? planner? Yeah. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's, again, I don't think that has any bearing on this record. I think it does. Well, but I don't think it does. Well, but to me, when you look at the prices up there, the costs, they're all about the same. I think you hung up too much on money. It sounds funny coming from me, I'm sure. It does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we're too much hung up on money, and I think you're not giving the, the citizens of town full credit. This is not the same town I, that it was 20 years ago. I think, I think they probably would go for something that was the right thing to do, and not a postage stamp. You know, I, we need the right thing. We need a... Uh, 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 new facility, both for both uses, police station and town hall. And myself, if I were doing it, I would be looking at a new location on Route One, which is halfway between Highfield and Plum Island. Uh, and I wouldn't be afraid of taking a property. I know this town hates to take a piece of property, but to me, you've got a lot of marginal businesses on Route One. You've got. Hell's junkyard. Welcome to Newbury. And look what it looks like. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of possibilities out there. Actually, it's limited land out there. I studied that. There's limited parcels. There's basically the JRM site. Yeah. There's the site where T. Uh, what's the excavation? T W. T W excavation's going on, but it's being bought out right now. There's, there's the Millen property. They're all bigger than the homes. site we've got. But I'm just saying, there's not as much land out there as you. They were all way bigger than three quarters of an acre, or it's where town hall sits. Well, I guess the question for Eric is, do you, can you respond to, to Fred's concerns about... And, and Eric, I, I apologize for, for jumping in, because I know I haven't been to any of the meetings, but they were at 7 o'clock in the morning. We went through that. But, <laughs> but, but, I, but I think that the contention is the site's not big enough, so what, what, what should... Not the well, whole use, for sure. Yeah, there, there are some challenges, and so the opportunity in, in showing you the Public Safety Complex Committee uh, to, with the idea of a fire company number two and the police station, because there is a whole other lot back there, and then when the existing fire station would come down, 
there would be some synergies of parking between the two complexes that could uh, that share parking and could help both facilities. So there was another thought about what that uh, public safety complex building and, and why it was located there. You are right. I mean, town hall site is small. Uh, it is on one of the major roads in town, and it, it is or has a feeling of being um, the center of town the way people move about and through town. So, you know, parking is an issue. Parking isn't exactly um, resolved or having a, a you know, sea of parking. But then again, you know, the, the option of rebuilding the town hall is to try to create a slightly bigger meeting space room, but it's not trying to make three three times. It's not trying to take the place of a, of a meeting uh, or an annual town meeting uh, that has to happen uh, in the school or torn. It's just not the kind of space that's being considered at all for Seat, 150 to 200 people. Um, Aaron, would it be best in some respects if you could put on the line to try to answer every question? I mean, Fred had a very good point. Eric, are you kind of, are you eating some good adults who want to do it? We could know the poignant issues of each person's question and maybe at the end have some way to go back over them. Yes. It would be nice if we could go through and kind of eliminate some of the, some of the options up front. It, it might not be possible, but it would be nice. But do me a favor, and then I'm going to ask you, when you say limit some of the options, you mean ask people right now maybe which ones they don't like? Well, I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's possible. David wants to hear a little more discussion on everything, Dave. I think you're right. I think we need a little discussion on yeah. So, I mean, one thing we've got now on option A is it's on a very small site. Right. Yeah, well, I just want to fill in on that, if you don't mind, because I wasn't quite done with that uh, because it's on a very small site for today's town, but now we'll go back to being a town plan. And That's more important, remember? Well, it is when I'm going to say this, and that is, you know, we have to plan for what it's going to be like 30 years from now. What's the town going to be in 30 years from now? 60, what is it, 6,600 now? More than likely, it'll be over 10,000 people. Probably more we have the space. Houses because of computers. We have the space. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, just a point. Yes. Before we delve into options, let, let's look at facilities. I, I think Fred is part of a valid point. The projected cost, why don't we discuss in general terms, regardless of location, what the strong hope would be here tonight for doing a brand new facility for police and uh, town hall or renovating an existing facility. I mean, I think if we reach a consensus that we're going to look at new construction for both facilities, it, it helps us a lot. And the reason I say that, when you renovate anything, uh, you incur great costs because you're, you're the demolition and the rebuild is it, more cost per square foot. I mean, one of the concerns we can have with renovating our hall could simply be by the time we finish paying the debt, we've already outgrown the facility, it's outdated program needs, and we're still paying the debt off. So I think Fred's point on new construction and uh, ultimate site has merit. Uh, but I think it would be interesting to hear a consensus from all of us present. What direction do we do we feel? Because whether well, it's new construction at Town Hall and new construction in the public remote area, it, it starts to close the gap on options. I agree with you. Right, so option A of all new says that you can't renovate Town Hall. Option B says you cannot put, you cannot renovate any part of town hall to stick a new police station in it. That's why the police station has to move somewhere else and leaves town hall right where it is. Um, option three is the reverse sort of thinking in that once town hall leaves the town hall site, then you're free to do with that site what you can. Um, as Fred pointed out, there may be some living issues uh, with parking, but there's only one department at the town hall site, and need for um, parking, especially for the police station, uh, is reduced. Right. Now, now, Bob, I'm wondering, 
I, I like what you put forward, but I'm wondering if now what Eric just said, looking at B and C, B and C really are the kinds of things that say or ask the question for us, do we as a group think that it's important to have these two uh, functions together? Because B and C don't put them together. So that would eliminate them. I mean, if we as a group all of a sudden said, no, we think the most important thing is to have the police function and the governance function together. So if we think that's the case, then B and C are out. Um, I think we have two representatives who can speak to that here. <laughs> as, the chief, um, as the police chief, logistically separating us would make our lives a little more difficult. Uh, we're in town hall. As much as they don't like it, we are in town hall all the time. Uh, we work very closely with the town administrator and all the departments, um, taking in all the fees from the waterways and the animal control things. Um, we're in and out of, have a symbiotic relationship with the treasurer's office, with the, the accountant's office, and with the town administrator. So we are very close. Um, separating them would make it logistically more difficult. I mean, we'd be driving across town to do the same things all the time that we could just walk across a hallway and do. But, you know, this this is a decision the town has to make. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to stay together. But I, I logistically, it would make much more sense to keep the departments together. Yeah, the other the other issue that I see, that if you separate the two, you have to solve the sewer problem twice, not just once. And if, like, if you use the one site, the right. academy, for a police station, it's probably 750,000 to connect it to their sewer. It's 750, you know now, it's to, to connect the current town hall with the new police sewer. To go off what the chief was saying, I was pulling up some existing some new constructions of uh, facilities, and that was one of the great tears that most communities that I saw in the first settings, they wanted to do together with the town hall. So it's pretty standard, it's not just unique to New York. There's an economical benefit to a combined facility. Why do you share plant and operation? Do you share uh, utilities? Do you share the elevator? Uh, I think the point about two sewers is, 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 is a very good example of if you have to do two separate facilities, if you have two separate infrastructures, two separate uh, sewer or waste disposal systems. So from an you know, economic standpoint, the combined facility is going to give us the most building for the least amount of time solved. I'd like to hear where Mike would like us to like to be uh, operational. You know, that, as running a police department. Are you happy where you are? Do you want to be on Route One? Why? The location we're in now is a great location. That that's here. It, 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 and I agree with what the planning board is saying. It, it is the hub of the town. Yeah. You know, everybody knows that is town hall is right there. That's the center of town, and that's where most people would expect the police department to be, right in the hub of the town. But, um, to move it out to one side or the other, the island, the byfield, logistically it could work. I don't think it's the ideal fit for the town. I think right so you're right happy in Old Town where you are now. We're we're very yeah, happy where we are. Um, just not in the facility here. <laughs> We, Tracy, Tracy, you, the question was posed to you a little earlier as to how you felt about this. Well, I was going to actually, Bob said it uh, on my behalf. I, I, it makes perfect sense for what I mentioned because we remain in a single uh, facility. Whether you decide to put that, uh, make the new civic center complex beyond Route 1 or, or an alternative location, me, it doesn't really matter. I guess that would be something that you guys would have to determine where the sentiment is among the residents to have that facility located. But from a financial perspective, it makes sense to have a combined facility. Um, and obviously, what we've heard tonight from the planning perspective, there is some recognition of, of the green as our as our um, civic center. Okay, I'd like to. Uh chime in there because we've had an operation where we have taken an operation and gone from one location to several locations. And from an operations point of view, it's one of the most difficult things to do 
because your, your business model, the business, because the you think you think of everything and you don't. And the things that come up that hinder operations with a spread in geography are, are just incredible. And so from an operations point of view, I would say there is no choice to, to split them apart. There's no operational reason to do that. There's no benefit at all. You know, a lot of downside. So I think that B and C are, are we should throw them out of the way. They make absolutely no sense. So let's let's get down to A and D and and, and what it's a choice. Friends, friends I mean, I don't know. Well, when you're thinking about the size and also I think that what those said modules, modules kind of broken it down into a new construction of the study of the so, so we have I, mean, I think we're not dealing with combined or not combined facilities. Say it again. Combined or non-combined facilities. Well, those are the, that's what I just said. That's it. But then, whether it's new construction or renovation, different question. But the real issue is... two questions. It seems we've broken it down to two questions. It's either going to be new construction by keeping the systems combined or renovated still keeping things combined. Correct. So, let's just... Eric, for you a question, well, my, one of my things to further build upon what Marshall and uh, Tracy was saying is that one of the things that we need to think about as we're doing this is what's the operational cost. And I'm sure that if the police department is separate and those functions are separate, someone who's in the station working in the station and then has to go to town hall and do something, we're going to need more personnel. And those operating costs over the long term need to be built into our operating budget. Even if we get a facility built, like the library, we have to staff it. And if we don't think about that going on long term, that's another way to think of it and why to keep as many people in one location rather than having people in cars driving back and forth when they need to be interfacing and working together. So I just think that that's really the, you know, a single location. So Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna suggest that we do a non-binding show of hands on a combined facility and the construction. Uh, again, just to see if we're all on the same page, or how much further discussion do we need, at least on those two issues? I think it's a good idea. David wants to say something. Just there's there's something along the same lines. I think that uh, there's a sense of consensus building uh, with the work of my facility. The way we still have a lot of sites and the locations that we're going to have to say that there is no sightings in this market. I feel like so why don't we have a store full like Bob had said for keeping the town hall and the police station together and we have a show of hands for people that would like to keep this group synergy consistent. So then like Bob had mentioned and David had built upon, which would go back to eventually maybe talking about location, should we try to distill whether we want to build new buildings or do you think we would like to renovate existing buildings? I think before that we should talk about I thought we already established that renovations are more expensive than closes and besides expense. The physical fact that we do not retrofit the town hall to the district. And it's quite fun to be. So I, I, I got from that that you wouldn't be able to renovate the existing. Or I, I kind of thought option B was off the table, cost and practicality. Well, no, it's not. It's almost the same. So why would you why would you renovate a structure, basically capture it, with a brand new structure that's more efficient for the same cost? I'd rather have a brand new house that's more efficient than take a house that has holes in the roof, rotting things, it's and bugs in the that makes pretty good sense to me, but go ahead. What do you say? I said that's straw pull too. Yeah. Well, we get it. Yeah. 
That's why I'm wondering, is I there any phase or something I going can't on? say what the future holds, whether or not the, the private companies will continue or we, we do, um, we are in a, a cost sharing relationship now and that we are, we're purchasing equipment for their utilization to, to protect our residents. Um, how that would that role would expand in the future, I don't know. The but current you, relationship, no. But you or anyone else who's involved with that process believe that what Larry has put forward is something that we can put on the table and have a discussion with you? I don't believe so, and at this point in time, I wouldn't recommend that. If they came to us with a vote and said, yeah, we changed our mind, we want to move forward with this, then it would, but I don't think but we I, can. I, but, 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 but I want to make sure I'm saying, we're talking we're about talking. telling them they can retain their total integrity, their total independence, it wouldn't be a combined right. facility right. at all. All it would be is, I think that they have, a, they have a piece of property that's right up on the property line, the equipment bay, if they, if they can so convince to move that onto a different side of their property, again, and I move the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, if I may, I did bring them a proposal. Um, we actually had appraisals of the property, and again, they voted against selling that piece to us. Just so that, just that, just that single piece. That piece. Yeah. The yeah. municipal yeah. building committee also thought, should we approach them and buy their second lot? which is the, right here, and put the police station new here, renovate the town hall, keep the fire company in the middle, and that was a close enough synergy as a secondary option. You still have to get to the elevator, you still have to get to, you, know, you have to get a little bit more of a sewer connection. But I think that brings up the, the, uh, the point about the sites, and one of the differences between the sites is the cost per site. And so, in the police station options in terms of um, town hall, in terms of, of governors, um, you know, those sites are, are free or, or donated or long lease options. Some people propose the word lease, but you know, that is in there as well. Um, the buying property, and I heard people say taking property. So maybe we can come to a consensus that what what's the best because that also helps define sites. I'm sure there's people, if they knew uh, some of the dire issues, there might be somebody out there that's willing to, to donate. But if somebody comes forward and says, you can, you can buy my site, it's only going to add to the cost that we're showing for. Eric, Eric, on the first option, which is the new police station, the new town hall, how many additional in the completed product, how many additional parking spaces from what we have now were there? Were there parking spaces up behind the building that I saw? We counted 39 spaces on the new, the all new option, of which if you take 10 and dedicate them for police parking only, um, leaves you 29 spaces. I believe they're with the trailer in place, I was saying there's around 17. We can't count them. That's just a temporary. How many will up the trailer? Six more. 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 Six well, out of that lot. That is another option. I know that's not popular in town, but that's an option. I think also, Fred, though, it does add to the cost of the overall project. Oh, no yeah. question about it, but not significant. I think what, what Eric's point is, is that if you're going to build a combined facility, it's going to be brand new, you need a location. You're either going to have a location, two are available for free, well, we have to go out and find a third location that we're going to pay money for. If we have to go out and acquire a site, we're going to add to the construction cost and our debt. And so I think if you're really breaking it down, it comes down to, to that. Do, do we want to try to keep our proposed cost here uh, as moderate as we can by utilizing two free sites? What are the two sites? 
Well, you have the governor's site on Route 1, which goes to the centralized location of a combined facility. I mean, to, to the chief's point, police cruises are out patrolling fire trucks and stationary. So the location of the police station being centrally located maybe is not quite as critical, say, as the fire station. Uh, but I mean, it would seem to me we have the governor's site that uh, we, we have some verbiage with lease, but it seems like it's a big enough site that you could have a combined facility over there with a little further discussion. And you have the town uh, hall site. I mean, if, if we left here tonight uh, with an understanding that combined facility, new construction, and we have two site options. And then we do our homework on that and come back to address. I, I guess my concern is, is the, I, I need more information on the site of my governors. Because I'm under the impression that we have a good link to connect to the water. You're expecting me to connect to the water supply. Um, I, I spent a year with Bifield Water. I know that you can't just connect up to their existing end of their pipe. I also know that they don't have the proper um, water storage requirements that they do right now. So they're, they're, their system isn't as easy as just connecting to it. But wouldn't that be answered if, if, you, if we had a charge for the NBC and, and this committee to provide the committee to vet to out those issues on both these sites and then do a follow-up meeting? I think it really moved this, this whole process. So, but just, so just vet this one out and also do further work on the other green site and see what the costs are as we push them. Because there are the relocation costs on the upper green that I'm, I'm just not clear on right now during the period of time when the when you're building a new building. Where do, and, and then functionally, where, where is the police department? Where is the uh, town hall functions during that period of time? If we're tearing all of those buildings down, to, to tearing everything down, yeah. and then starting the construction, so I think that does need further work. Um, Tracy, have you talked to um, your report whether they're willing to come the city on um, town hall? Yes. So yes, yes I got approval from, so, from the sort of water 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 Yeah, no, nothing else. But at least I mean that that would be a key factor, though. We have issues with that. That's going to be resolved. It's on its way. So a quick, uh, quick answer on the parking. Looking at the zoning for civic administration, it's one parking space per 400 square feet of gross floor area. So um, based on 14,431 and 36 spaces. 36. So not far off. So not far off unless you, you know, unless you have other assembly spaces that you need to take into account. <coughs> You know, as, as much as um, this is a good thing to do, um, the only thing that, well, a couple of things that bother me about this, uh, and that is that it, there is the theory. Are you talking about the town hall side? No, this, this, I'm, I'm sorry, so I'm pointing at the street. John, you talked about this thing. Yeah, the yeah. town hall and the police station. That, that's that's yeah. what Bob had suggested, okay. that we, we look at that as a combined town hall police station. And, and, and the, the problem with that, from my point of view, is that it's so isolated yeah. uh, from the perspective of uh, whether or not when you invest eight, nine million dollars, you would hope that you get some kind of second generation impact from that. And here, you're not going to get it. You're surrounded by public utility, you know, all yeah. public yeah. economic development. Yeah. There is a possibility, although I don't know how strong it is, because you can but if you did put something out on Route 1 in the area that we have been looking at to uh, revitalize between uh, Hanover and uh, south towards Boston Road, and if you can find something there that you can put a architecturally interesting building in this and that, you might have a generative kind of positive. As much as I don't like that, I like the Upper Green site better. But I'd be much more interested in looking at that because I think the benefits that would accrue to the town are stronger there than this location. Do you have a sore connection to the report? Because it actually comes down to the line right there, and the water's right there at the line. So I, it's not that far off. But I don't know what site. But, but I think it's valid to look at this site. I think it's valid to look at this. 
to see what the costs of sewer and water are, and then we could then say, well, is there a site for sale? Or that we could negotiate for, and how much is that compared to the water and sewer costs? Um, before you speak, Bob, I kind of wanted to second that because I feel like you talked about keeping this as cheap as possible, and I don't think that that's necessarily the right way to go with this project. Amen. Because we're talking about a 50 year building, we're talking about expansion. On the site we have, we can barely squeeze in the 9,000 square foot building. You know, on the Route 1 site, who knows what the costs are. I think we have agreed that we're going to build a new building, it's going to hold both facilities, and I think we need to look for the best place to do that so it's going to serve the town for the longest possible time. Whether that's the JR site, whether it's someplace else, I think, while I'd love to have our site and move forward and be done with it, I think we need to do more research. I also have no idea how things are seized by eminent domain. I think I'll probably get killed for that, but uh, you know, I think we need to know what that is looking forward. So if someone can explain that to me, that would well, be great. Well, it goes through a process of, of analyzing the piece of property, and an appraisal on the property, and determine the far, fair market value, and then you negotiate with the property. And if the property owner negotiates, then you're fine. Then if you don't, you have to take it to the legislative body, which is the board of selectmen, and the board of selectmen have to make a finding that taking this property is in the public interest. And if it's in the public interest, then you can take it back. Right. I'm not suggesting. <laughs> Damon, I, I don't mean to imply that we're going to limit this to just two sites, but I think it would be, it would, it would be a, a good step to look at the two free sites and then report back to the committee. And at that time, if there is another site that can be acquired or bought or, or taken, uh, add that to the mix. And before we make any final decision on a site, but at least we've done our due diligence on that. I think we have to do this because the taxpayers are going to expect us to respect the value of their tax dollar. Uh, and, and it might come down to a case where you put two options. Here's option A, oh, governors are no, 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 delve into the line items that are five digits and put a hold on it and have a 40 minute discussion on that because the town likes to participate in that level of decision making. And usually we get to the final, we get to the finish line by answering all the questions, alleviating the fears, but we shouldn't be afraid of presenting different options. And, and that could be a town meeting, not necessarily a or at some other forum. Yep. Oh, that's right. So, what do you need to do? Advance the study so that we're, you know, we've done all the work I can do in terms of, of sizing of the site. Certainly, another site we can put some information and do some research on it. We can ask the committee members to call around and find more like uh, police stations and more data to yep. size up that are going in the right direction. But I think we really need to find a site and do a proper study to see exactly what the costs are, exactly what we can get because then that one option needs to be started to be represented to the, the residents so they understand exactly what they're going to get for the costs. No, just ended with three options though. So you had the option of the existing site, you had the option of the governor's site, and then you were thrown out about a site on Route 1. What would you like to do about Site 1? Would you like to throw that off the table? Or would you like to stay with us there? I think any site on Route 1 is a site on Route 1. I think the town hall is a town hall site. I think you're right. Any site on Route 1 is a site on Route 1. And so you analyze that. Yeah. And, and you learn from that. that can come out of that in terms of you could build a police station on Route 1 at a fine site, acquiring a large piece of land and set up to bring the town hall there in the immediate future and set up for that 
combined town hall and police but then police station. And police station, but you can build the town hall first and we can say, okay, this is half the project, we're gonna champion this smaller budget and we're gonna get this thing done right now. And we're gonna put it on this piece of property, but we've done our due diligence and we thought ahead. We've got the sewer connection, we've got the water connection, we've got a piece of property that we can eventually add to town hall there. I I don't know, I signed up for the Public Safety Complex Committee after being on the Zoning Board of Appeals and talking to some people and understanding it was an issue. And I thought all I was going to do was just hopefully bring the idea that whatever this building was in the final state, that there was, as an architect, that there was great value in this building, both from just being economical and being organized and providing uh, for the future, but also hopeful that someday we can talk about the looks of this building so that everybody, whether it's a resident, or a visitor that drives through and say, that's a great building, I'm in a great town, this this feels appropriate, this is the right thing. I'm in a great town, look at, look at the town hall that they have. So I was hoping to get there and it's taken a couple of turns and, and that's where we need to get to. So I think if we figure out how to get to studying town hall and a, a site on Route 1 that has the same program as town hall, then we have two options. Um, that can easily become one option with a direction to, to make it happen in the timeline that we're looking to do this, which is moving forward from today. So what do you need us to agree on tonight before we leave? Eric has been over here waving around <laughs> for about 10 minutes now. Why don't we give her a shot? One of the questions I have is, is the governor's site I, I feel like my gut right now is telling me we should go after one of the two existing identified sites rather than theorizing about a third let's find a place site that might cost us more money. But my big question about this one is whether or not there's even the option to make this a dual use. Like are they are the is governors open to having both of those facilities there and is there enough space on that lot to do a combined facility? Those are good questions. We don't know that. We can even take a look at it. It's the far end of their site that they're never going to get to. Anyway, you would think that yes, it probably could accommodate that. But I don't think the question's ever been, been asked. Okay. Because um, I think that that, I feel like, we, like that's something that we, we definitely need an answer to before we move forward on saying, let's consider that a site um, if it's not going to be at all viable. Um, but I, right now, it just feels wrong to me that I just, I don't see it. I feel like that with the time frame, with the issues that are going on, that if we set about kind of scope out a third site on group, you know, a, some theoretical site on group one, then we're gonna be another year before we meet back in this room and be able to put something forth and in front of the donors. Well, but, but with, with the new site for the new construction, we may not need to move out of the current facility until we're ready to move into the new ones. Yeah, but their current facilities aren't workable. <laughs> we're, we're still looking, we're looking at another full year. We're into 2019. Town Hall, town hall is, needs temporary facilities. It, it needs to uh, uprooting and, and making something happen for a couple of years where everyone has to uh, make accommodations in order to make that happen. If we take the Route 1 site, which is Governor's, and we plan out a facility, then any other site would have to match that layout. Or we have the guidelines, we have the understanding, right. we have the parking count, we have, here's the front door, here's the entrances, that site we can quickly we can take, pop back down, and place, place, place it right in. It, it, it works or it doesn't work, and then we move on. It's not like this big discussion. It's, it's either going to be, or it's going to add extreme value because A, it's got a better location, to I don't know, the water or the sewer, or Issues are better. Yeah, Eric, 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 do you, do you know? Do you know? What we, I thought I heard the number of 36 parking spaces for a new site, a, a new construction on the existing site. Do we know how many the site should have in terms of parking? Parking just uh, 36. 36. 36. 36. If you take the square footage that we're proposing and divide by 400, as required by the zoning bylaws, then. Um, given what you know about the, the new construction now, it, it's on three quarters of an acre. How much acreage would we need, ideally, for, for this structure? There are 39 spaces shown on the new CSS report combined site plan. So if we need 36 and we have 39 shown, 
uh, the question there is it doesn't quite make it because the police department has how many parking spaces up front? How many vehicles do you park? With the personal vehicles and vehicles, 15. So we would have to take 36 um, and figure out what that number is so that we accommodate zoning, but also at least have dedicated spaces which aren't public spaces. So there's a little bit of gray area, it's probably greater than 36 spaces that need to be accommodated. And even so, um, I don't know how people feel, but the entrance on the Morgan, Morgan Ave and the two entrances on the high road aren't by traffic standards the greatest uh, setup for cars uh, pulling out into that intersection. So um, you probably might get a few more cars on be more like three and more parking spaces. I you know, and the appropriate That's amount of handicap spaces also need to be shown, which are shown in that. So town hall space is appears to be deficient by um, five to ten spaces. David, David is
if, if we have a cohesive plan, all of the work that's been done, we we have a footprint. We, we have a basic program need building for town halls and a police station. Where we place that is really the site, site costs, site conditions that we have to overcome. Uh, and part of that would be working with governors on reaching a consensus on uh, if, if that is going to be a viable option, if a lease versus uh, an outright being uh, sold or uh, given to us. My understanding was there was some issue on the sewer type. Well, as we all know, any board of directors or any board of trustees of any entity or institution by a vote can modify some restriction to allow that. And I think it would demonstrate a certainly a good community effort on governor's part uh, to, to work with us to see if we can fully investigate that site so that when it comes back to this group, uh, David will have all the answers he wants on the governor's site, all the answers he wants on the townhouse site, and if there's a third site that meets the water sewer parameters, we're down to making a simple decision at that point. And we're not going to do this in our app. But I think by establishing the parameters and then the next steps, we've accomplished a great deal tonight. And, and I think Mike's pep talk to us all earlier uh, has, has initiated uh, some enthusiasm, I think, in all our classes to reach a consensus and, and move this off of, yeah, we need it, but all we have to do is close up these three particular uh, issues and, and then we can move forward. Quick question. Um, just being part of the NBC and being tasked with looking at the two sites, early on there didn't seem like there was much interest in pulling away from the green. I just don't want to go through an exercise and then have it be, well, we really don't want to move away from the green. Is there any appetite to move away from the green? I can tell you I personally don't like the other side. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Don't like it. It's in the oh. middle of nowhere, and the land all around it is protected land. It's, it's, a, it's a bad site. Well, there's it's a, a nice very large parcel of land in the sale of the green, the town hall that we put up in the hill. So, <laughs> how, how big is that piece of land? <laughs> oh, yeah. Build up your house. So, but. In reality, let's look at what we've accomplished, especially for my state tonight. We've definitely decided on new construction. We've decided on the facility. We've decided that A has merit and we're going to look at what the governor's site might have to offer. And during that time, if something else were to um, could become available, we definitely look at that too. Is there anything else that I well, heard that one would to say? Thank you for presenting else? the options of the program that we're talking is about 14,000 square foot or less building. We're not going to make this road of 18,000, 20,000 square feet. We've laid out the program. Certainly, every effort we've made to minimize uh, where we can. There will be some synergy to combine facility. Uh, the cost that's, that's out there is about 8 million plus or minus. See how in the package how the two get separated, how the two get combined, and, and again more effort will be done on that. We're not talking 10 million or 11 million, it's got to be eight or, or less. Uh, and the, the last thing is that you know, we talked about the scope, you know, we talked about um, it's in schedule. Um, you know, we need to also as the initial building committee, I think we'll be sharpening the dates on the schedule that we then the milestones that all these committees and boards need to meet. Um, so cost schedule. It's what it takes to be a project when we talk about scope, we talk about the cost, and we just talk about the schedule. So if we're leaving we need to commit to the schedule because it's something like a party or an opening date that we take and set to make this what is the schedule of next week? Four years from now, it's the open. Oh. Well, that's the grand scheme. We're going to work back. So Make that mean the string time meeting. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the you need, you need to have something prior to that, though. So you must be looking somewhere in December, January for actual site location. I think there's enough 
tonight. I think the Minister Building Committee and the next week will, will take this in and try to strategize how this can be presented to residents okay. and start to figure out how to present this package and why these options came about and why there's value and you know, what is going to be asked of them so that the time we get to um, the spring annual town meeting, uh, the question for funding studies to, to make this happen uh, goes as quickly as possible. Uh, do you want the, uh, if we're looking at the annual town meeting for funding for studies and requests, do you have the ability to do you have any you have contacts at all with others who have been yet? Yes, yes we do. So I mean, that would be the next step is to at least fulfill the seemingly the consensus of the student has done. Yes. And we'll talk to them about what we need to think about. Um, that being said, I'm sure people are not be you know, looking at this they think for a third side. Do we want to try to schedule our another meeting to get back and we've got your findings? Of governance? Um, um, do you schedule yes. another meeting? It's probably narrowed down. It's not a bad idea to schedule it. If we don't yes. get some yeah, sort of schedule. meeting together, but I think Harris will need a little timeline as to how to pick up. I don't think we can give us some. Right, so I was just thinking, okay, there's, there's November, if we could roll out a public workshop in November with that information, and if we could meet this committee just before we have that workshop, that would be. And valuable where you try to run the you know, with a consensus and then we have a consistent message to deliver. Um, and I'm not exactly, not exactly sure of the timing um, of that. The committee needs to talk and figure out what our resources are and how we going to do what in order to get there. And then thinking of December and pushing up into the holidays, what's everybody's, you know, what's the cutoff date for having a meeting to direct you to schedule it? Possible, yeah. Maybe it's early December. I was going to say, early, early December, December is a good, yeah. a good time to get back together. Uh, you'll probably have some, some good ideas, uh, as Bob said. We know the parameters of, that the site has to have, and some may, in fact, drop completely out for reasons that we don't know yet. But I think uh, coming back early December and moving this thing along is appropriate. We've heard from the chief. He's tired of people sitting on their hands and not doing anything. So let's put a stake in the ground and get back together. Listen to what Marsha said. We have a meeting with Sunday night. There's a second meeting with the circuit board in the same with the same agenda. Uh, Does that sound good to everyone? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So I see the, the train words historic centered idea. I think there are, especially the opening room one where JR is and some of the other defunct buildings. I see great value. I mean, looking at those sites because cleaning up that entrance of our town, I think, could do a lot for the town, even though the train board has. So I just want to make sure that there's the appetite there that if we come back and the result is good, that it's not going to go, well, we really like to still stick with green. Uh, well, that's where you, know, <laughs> like Chuck has indicated his opinion on things, and I take that very seriously about what, what your instincts are. So, I mean, but I think that we owe it to ourselves that we need to look at these options and then we can pull through by this. Uh, is, is the JR site the corner of the road and the blue line? Yes, yeah, it's in the north. I JR. thought that was going to be used for a soap. It is. Yeah. Well, well, sure. Back in. That's sure. yeah. the piece that's up against the JR. Drop it, son. Get back in. Drop it, son. I thought that was going to be used for a street side. With a green side. And I'd be wondering if if we can get a schedule of Newport Water to our town hall here, could we get it? We would have to investigate that. That, that is not a, a connection site that they approved, so we would have to go back to that. But as Kathleen said, they already have water. I understand that, but there are some limitations with their system on where those limitations are and whether or not they can make the connection. So it may be possible, but we have to get started that. Unless I, Eric. 
Yeah, so I guess to, to sum up and to finish, jump all over. That's what you want. It's a good guy, Tom. It's a good guy. So can we just have a vote? And the vote would be that the recommendation and the ideas that the what the Municipal Committee, but all committees, need to do is that we um, narrow it down to site two. Site option A, which is the town hall, B, which is the governor's site, and it could possibly be a site on group one, but it would have to meet the water and sewer parameters, and it would take the footprint and outline of what happens and what we develop at governor's and, and just move up or down the road. Um, if it didn't fit on the site or if it had other constraints, it would be considered an option. But that's so, new construction. That's so new construction, and it's a combined facility. It's 14,000 square feet. Costs about eight million dollars, and it's you know we're looking at a 50 year facility that in every single way adds value. Yeah. Wonderful. Well done. All those opposed? You've got a, a radio. Now that you record that at this joint meeting they have a quorum present, all the people we both have the firm. Look, if you have my house charge, the heat is identified, so we don't get to have it moving. Because that's not going to happen for another 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Riley would love to see this done before we go.